Hey all, Amanda here with an all new prediction video for tonight's special American Ninja Warrior episode, which kicks off season 13. To celebrate Mother's Day, American Ninja Warrior is hosting its first ever all women's championship. Tonight, we get to watch the top 12 most talented female athletes in this field. We get to see three rounds of elimination ending in a power tower showdown until the last woman standing wins the title and $50,000. This special was filmed last year during the taping of season 12. I have a feeling, due to the travel restrictions which occurred in 2020, this is our substitute for the usual US versus the World special that usually kicks off a new season. The season hasn't even started yet, and I'm already in trouble trying to guess what may be ahead of us, and it all begins with this special. I have read a few things and seen a few things, some of which will contain spoilers that I will not share here. Well, not until the recap after the episode airs. And as always, please keep in mind that I have no personal information on the show, runs, obstacles, or ninjas. I'm just a fan of the show and like following the ins and outs as the season progresses. I will tell you what I've heard, but I can in no way guarantee that that's how it will actually play out. I also do a lot of theorizing, which may or may not be close. Regardless, I only make these videos for fun and out of love, so please watch these with a grain of salt. That being said, here's what I know. Oh, and FYI, I will let you know when I'm guessing. The night will be broken down into three rounds. The first round will consist of six obstacles, the second round will have ten obstacles, and the final round will be a power tower showdown. Twelve women will compete in round one. That I know for sure. I do not know how many women advance to round two or to the power tower. My best guess is that only the top six of the initial twelve advance to round two. Again, guessing here. I would assume that round two will only offer up the top two spots for the final round. I was thinking, maybe the top four of six would advance and we would have two semifinals and a final, seeing three separate power tower matches, if that makes sense. Either way, with such a small group starting out, every run is going to be a nail biter. I do not know the obstacles for round two, which again consists of ten obstacles, nor am I sure what version of the power tower we will see at the end. I would guess that we would most likely see the basic version that was used at the end of the qualifiers and the first round of the finals in season 12 with the 40 foot stair climb, pole descent, balancing across the curved steps rather than the cliffhanger, up a pole and across the falling shelves to the buzzer. If we do get three power tower runs, maybe the final run will have the core switch to the cliffhanger. As for round one, it consists of six obstacles, and I have the list. Again, this was filmed during last season's tapings, so we don't have anything new in round one, but it will still be a challenge to get through. We start off with the shrinking steps, where ninjas must run up five steps that ascend upwards as they decrease in size. They then must reach out to grab a rope, swinging to the platform, and safety. Next, we have off the hook. Ninjas grab a ring that hangs from a peg at the bottom of a swinging pendulum. Athletes must build momentum to launch themselves to a second pendulum and hook a peg with the ring that they bring from the first pendulum. They then swing off to the landing platform. Next, the beehive returns. This obstacle first introduced last season was made out of three honeycomb shaped boards. The first and third boards were parallel to the course, but the middle honeycomb was angled perpendicular to the others, and once there, Ninjas had to rotate the honeycomb in a 270 degree direction, counterclockwise, until it was locked into place, allowing them to proceed. Next is burn rubber, a balance obstacle, where ninjas run across the tops of three rotating wheels, which alternate in height and veer off to the right. Balance obstacles are always a nightmare and can be some of the most nerve wracking moments of a show. Next up is another new one from last season, as Sideways Returns. Competitors must swing sideways along three tilting boards before rotating 90 degrees to grab a handle on a perpendicular board which slides down a short track. Then, they must make their way across three more boards, the last of which rotates, before dismounting to the landing platform. And as always, 
We end with the 14 and a half foot warped wall. It is exactly as it sounds, where competitors have a short run up to scale a concave wall to reach the buzzer at the top. I have not heard anything about a mega wall for this special, and I don't expect to see one in the second round. The last woman standing wins $50,000. That is all I know about the courses and round thus far. However, I will guess obstacle 7 in round 2 will be the salmon ladder, as it usually follows the warped wall. That obstacle looks like a ladder without the steps, and athletes must jump a bar up the ledges, reaching the top, which usually leads to the 8th upper body strength obstacle. This may not be the case tonight, but I would not be surprised to see it play out that way. I also have a feeling we will be seeing the return of the always dizzying corkscrew. This obstacle consists of three poles hanging from above, all of which have a spinning wheel at the bottom that drops and spins athletes around to the bottom. They then must swing upwards to reach a second wheel, survive the drop, and swing to reach the third wheel, and repeat the task until they can safely jump to the landing platform. I can also see the spider trap, or some variation of it, ending round two. Again, these are just guesses, but I guess we'll all just have to wait and see. As for the contestants, 12 of the toughest female competitors in this field will give it their all tonight, and in a show where anything can happen, I have a feeling this will be a not-to-be-missed show. However, in an effort to get the latest scoop, I willingly chose to watch a sneak peek run, even though I knew it would contain spoilers. I was just not aware of how many spoilers this round one run would be showing. Some of you may be aware of which run I saw in full, and some may even have reached the same conclusions as I did, as there was enough information provided to really fill in some blanks. I personally hate spoilers, but I made the sacrifice so I could bring you all the most up-to-date, official info I could find. I'm sure there are way bigger fans out there than I am that have all the details. However, I will not be sharing those spoilers in this video. I may discuss what happened in the recap video. Avoiding assumptions will make my predictions tough, as this one teaser may have provided more than NBC wanted. In no particular order, we have Rachel Goldstein, an occupational therapist who made her debut in Season 8. She was one of the original Fantastic Four, as she was one of the only four women to make the top 30 and advance to city finals, a historic moment in American Ninja Warrior history and fitting for tonight's first all-female special. She competed the next three years, then took off a year due to pregnancy, but returned in season 12, bringing along with her two other new ninja parents to be part of her team. Rachel broke her thumb during season 12 and had to be replaced by Jerry Derilio. I'm guessing the injury happened after the special was filmed. I hope Rachel does well, but this competition is fierce and I do not see her advancing round one. Next up, we have Janique Lovett. A personal trainer and mother of two, Shanique debuted in Season 9. She returned for Season 10, but an injury kept her away Season 11 until she was invited back as a captain, bringing along two friends with her. Her qualifying run was digested last year, as she went out early, but she still managed to advance to the semi-final amongst the women's board, but a balance obstacle took her out again. Dubbed Janique Magnifique by Akbar, I know she will put her heart into the run, but I do not see her advancing stage one. Hopefully she returns for season 13. We also have Jerry Derilio, a member of the U.S. Army JAG Corps and a six-year veteran of the sport. She first competed in season seven in the military episode and never left. She finds running these courses relaxing and can often be seen laughing through the obstacles. She led off a military team season 12, and though she did not advance herself, she did replace Rachel Goldstein after Rachel broke her thumb and had to withdraw. Jerry is fun to watch and has as much heart as she does fun, but I do not think she will advance to round two. Sandy Zinnerman also joins the field tonight. A PE teacher and mother of three, Sandy has competed on three seasons of American Ninja Warrior. Not only has she inspired countless women and mothers, being the first mother ninja to scale a warped wall in American Ninja Warrior history, season 11, but also inspired her family to join in as well. Her husband Charles competed on season 10, and her children have competed in American Ninja Warrior Jr. Sandy herself missed out on season 10, 
as she was receiving multiple surgeries for several injuries. She returned to season 12 as a captain to a team of ninja moms. She always gives her all every time she runs, but again, the competition is so, so tough tonight. Having to cut half of these women is rough. I do not think Sandy will advance to round two. Tiana Weberly, or Sweet Tea, returned for her sixth year, season 12. Sweet Tea is a stunt woman and trains with my favorite ninja, Flip Rodriguez, who is also a stunt person. Tiana also appeared on American Ninja Warrior, Ninja vs. Ninja, as well as Team Ninja Warrior. She is always so much fun to watch, and I always want her to do well, but she seems to come up short often, just squeaking by on the women's board. I will be cheering for her again tonight, but unfortunately, I do not think she will advance to round two. Alyssa Beard competes tonight, and that only makes sense. An elementary school teacher, Miss Beard has been running courses since season eight, where she made history by becoming one of only four women to advance to city finals, making her one of the original Fantastic Four, and on her debut season two. And if that story wasn't great enough, she also found love with fellow ninja James McGrath. Alyssa is the first woman to have finished in first place on a city qualifying course. She was also the second woman to ever complete stage one in the Vegas finals and became the second woman to ever attempt stage two in the Vegas finals. The hardest thing about making these kind of predictions is that I want everyone to advance and right off the bat, the format is making me cut half of these elite ladies. But for some to advance, some must stay behind. I do not think Alyssa will move on to round two. Newlywed Michelle Warnke Burma and another of the original Fantastic Four graces the course tonight. After announcing season 12 might be her last year, considering retirement to embark on starting a family with new husband Joel, devastation hit when for the first time in her career, her season officially ended in the qualifying rounds after she hesitated before taking a jump, causing her to go out on the second obstacle, Lunatic Ledges. Season 12 marked her eighth straight season on the show. She ties Megan Martin for most qualifications for a city finals course for a female, both having qualified six times. She also holds the rare distinction of being only the second competitor to finish a course with blood dripping from their face. I hope Michelle can find redemption tonight and makes it to round two. Ashley McConville also joins the ladies on the course. A 20-year-old student, who debuted two years ago on season 11, where her qualifying run was digested. She joined J.J. Woods' team last year, where she conquered the warped wall on her third and final attempt in the qualifiers, but did not advance through the semifinals. Something tells me that she trained with the Bergstrom crew and was dating fellow ninja Caleb, but I could be wrong. Ashley was an absolute delight to watch last year, and I'm so glad to see her back, at least for tonight. Let's hope she returns for season 13 as well. The competition is going to be super tough tonight, but I think she can hold her own, and I hope she does well. Probably my favorite female ninja, Megan Martin returned for her seventh season last year, where she was a team captain, inviting two friends to join her. Megan was one of the first females to be noticed for her talent in the sport, and has been an inspiration for countless young girls ever since. She is a professional mountain climber, a sports and fitness model, and is now newly engaged. Megan always gets some of my loudest cheers, and I would love to see her in the finals. If she does well tonight, hopefully she will come back for future seasons. I could see her taking a cue from Michelle Warnke Verma and retiring to start a family. From her first run in a chicken suit to becoming the literal poster child of the sport, Jessie Graff will be one of the most anticipated runs of the night. Season 12 marked her seventh year on the show. Graf was the first woman to attempt a city finals course in American Ninja Warrior history, the first woman to compete on stage one in American Warrior history, the first woman to compete on stage two in American Ninja Warrior history during a U.S. versus the World competition, where she was the first woman to be part of Team USA. Jessie Graf was one of the last two women standing last year, along with Jessie Lebrecht, but a miss on the falling shelves during the finals ended her season. Unfortunately, as I mentioned in my season 12 episode 8 recap, it looked like Graf instantly grabbed her left shoulder when she hit the water and immediately started stretching it out. Though she gave a brave smile, 
It has since been revealed that Graf tore her ACL and both rotator cuffs and was undergoing surgery. This happened after filming the special, so it will not interfere with her runs tonight. However, Jesse Graf will not be able to partake in season 13. I see her advancing to round two, if not to the power tower. I think most of us now just assume she will always be one of the last women standing. Just don't forget that this is American Ninja Warrior, where anything can and usually does happen. ICU nurse and former gymnast Maddie Howard returned for her second year last season. Although she didn't hit a buzzer her rookie year, she was consistently fast enough to advance all the way to the Vegas finals. Last year, however, she managed to complete the course and place first amongst the women to qualify to the semifinals, where she just missed out on qualifying there by one spot. I remember being impressed every time I see her run, and I do see her advancing to round two. What she can do from there is anyone's guess. I wouldn't be too surprised to see her in the final two. And last but not least, Jesse Lebrecht, the only woman to this point to have achieved six career buzzers and the only woman to have attempted the power tower. Naturally, she is one of the original Fantastic Four, which happened her rookie year. Flex is a gym operator and lives with fellow ninja veteran and fiance, Chris Ganji. Flex was the last woman standing season 12, advancing to the final eight to run the power tower. I can't be sure, but I'm guessing that she had not competed against Daniel in the finals at the time of this women's special being filmed. If she is one of the final two to face off in the power tower tonight, it would be interesting to know if she had been on this power tower before she ran against Daniel in the normal season. Flex is basically the alpha female now, and I can see her making it all the way to the power tower yet again, and maybe even taking it all. So, those are our top 12 women, and my thoughts on them all. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on any of these ladies, and who you will be cheering for tonight. Right now, based on what little I know, I am guessing the 12 get cut in half, round 1. My 6 picks to advance to round 2 are... Michelle Warkey Burma, Ashley McConville, Megan Martin, Jesse Graff, Maddie Howard, and Jesse Lebrecht. If only two move on to face off in the Power Tower, I would guess it would be another showdown between the Jessies, with Flex taking it all. Of course, I would love to see Megan in the final two, especially since she's planning for a wedding. And I would not be surprised if one of the newer ladies shocked us all like Maddie or Ashley. Obviously, Michelle could use the extra money for future babies, and it would be a great way for her to retire. All of these women are so talented, and we the viewers are definitely the big winners here, but I will say we see another battle of the Jessies with Lebrecht dominating. Don't miss what is sure to be an exciting kickoff for Season 13 with our inaugural Women's Championship match. Leave your comments and come back after the show airs for a full recap and my thoughts on the show. I already know I'm going to love it. Season 13 of American Ninja Warrior starts May 31st. Check local listings for times. So until next time, enjoy the show!